So now that we have our character moving left and right and slowing down or we let go of the keyboard, we need to think about the up and down. So the two things that need to happen are the character needs to fall. So if they're not supported by the platform, they need to fall down to the floor or to the next platform below them. And the player should be able to jump as well. So the player should be able to jump the character up onto ledges. And if they jump too high, they will fall down until they hit the ledge or the floor. So the up and the down, that's what we need to work on now. So, um, so far with our code, we've used one variable and it's called speed X. X of course is the horizontal axis in a grid and X is for the left and right. So what we need to do now is create another variable for the vertical movement for the speed up and the speed down. So let's head over to uh, variables and uh, we'll make a variable. And we'll keep the structure of our variables the same. So this will be speed y and then click OK. So I have speed x for the left and right and speed y for the up and down. Now, remember that uh, the new variable will automatically be placed on your um, game area here. We don't want speed y to be visible. So in the variables section, remove the tick next to speed y and that will be hidden from view. There are some variables we will want to display, like the number of lives and the level we're on, but speed x and speed y are just for us programmers. Okay, so we have the uh, variable speed y. At the beginning of the program, we set speed x to zero. We need to do the same thing for speed y. So let's just pull this forever loop down for a moment and uh, set speed y to zero. Let's just change that in the drop down menu. There we go. So we have set speed x to zero, set speed y to zero, and then we can connect that. Now this forever loop is holding all of our code. So there's all the code here for the moving left and right, and it's contained within this forever loop. And we need to put inside that forever loop another block of code very similar. Uh, to this code here for the left and right, but it's going to be within the forever loop. So just above this bottom section here, that's where the code needs to go. Let's zoom in so we can see that more clearly. Right, let's start off then. The first thing that needs to happen is that we need to make sure the player is falling if um, they are not touching anything. So let's go to motion and change y just down here change y by now this needs to go inside the forever loop so just there so it's underneath all of the x stuff but it's still inside the forever loop so change y by and of course it's going to be this speed y variable do be careful here that you don't accidentally choose x for anything we're no longer going to be using x at all we're done with X. This is all Y. So do make sure that uh, you don't accidentally use the wrong block or the wrong variable. Right. So what we need to do now is um, ask one of these if questions again. Are we touching the platform? Now, again, there are two possible options. If I grab this if block here, because either we are touching the platform in which case something needs to happen. We need to stop moving or we're not touching the platform, in which case we need to fall. So either of those two things uh, are possible. So when we need to know if one thing or another is happening and we're going to do a different thing in each case, we need the if block that has this else in the middle. And this gives us these two possible sections that we can put code into. So let's drop this underneath the last block of code there. So if what? We need to know if we're touching the platform. So let's go back to sensing, grab the touching mouse pointer and change that to platform and then drop that inside the cartouche like that. So if we're touching the platform, what do we need to do? Well, if you notice up here, we've got a very similar line of code. Earlier on, on this line, we asked if we're touching the platform, this is for moving left and right. 
And if we were, then we wanted to change x by the opposite of whatever speed x was. So if we were doing uh, 70, we would have to change x by minus 70. So that's what this speed x times minus 1 is doing. And we need to do something very similar with y. So we're going to change y. Let's go to motion and grab a change y by. So pop that inside the first section for this if block here. Uh, so if we are touch, uh, touching the platform, change y by, and we need one of these multiplication blocks here, and it's going to be speed y times minus 1. So pop speed y on the left, type minus 1 on the right. And you see how this line here is almost exactly the same as this line here. The only difference is that we've changed x for y. So that will uh, change the y by the opposite of whatever the speed is. So if we are uh, falling at 10, whatever 10 might be in this game, if we're falling at a, a speed of 10, then when we hit the platform, we need to uh, change x by the opposite of 10. So that'd be minus 10. So uh, that's what that's doing there. Uh, let's also make sure that we set the speed down here so the speed y make sure we set that to zero so that we're not going to be moving anymore so we change the, the x by the opposite of whatever our speed is and then we stop the speed dead because we've hit the platform so that's that what happens otherwise so what's the uh, the other possibility well the other possibility is we're not touching the platform in which case we need to um, change the uh, y position by minus one we need to sort of drop down so what we'll do is set change speed y so change speed y by minus one so it's going to be uh, negative one it's going to be uh, reducing as we fall so if we now run this game and i'm going to run it um yeah i should be able to do it in full screen let's try that so run it in full screen. The first thing you might notice there is the players falling down. Let me just stop that game again. Let me just uh, come out of that and move this character right up here. Let's move him right to the top, actually. So watch this carefully. There he is. I'm going to press the, press the green flag. Oh, and of course, yes, the other thing is that uh, he appeared to go through the platform. What actually happened, of course, is that we set the coordinates up here. So let me just change those as well. Let me just bring him up there. Let me just replace these coordinates with the coordinates of where I've just moved him to, like that. And there we go. So we'll run the game. There he is. And there he is. Do you see him falling? Uh, so he fell. And uh, I can now uh, move left and right. Uh, I can't jump yet. We haven't done the jump code. We'll do that next. But if I go to the right here, I can fall off that platform. There we are. I've fallen down onto... Um, this platform again i can move left and right and if i slide off that pl platform there we are i've dropped to the floor so again if i run the code there we are we fall we fall we fall so that's working perfectly so that's the code that we need in order to be able to allow our player to fall so now we've got that code working, um, put that code in yourself, test the code to make sure that everything's working fine. And in the next tutorial, we will then put in the other bit of code we need. And it's not very much, just a little bit of code, uh, but that will allow our player to jump. And at that point, we will have a fully movable player that will be able to test out our level and make sure that it works. So when you're ready, I'll see you in the next tutorial.